we receive the grace of God this morning. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus, put your hands together. Let's celebrate our papa with a clap. Let's celebrate our mama with a clap. Let's rejoice this morning. Let's give a shout of praise unto the Lord. Whoa! Hallelujah. Good morning, papa. Good morning, mama. Hallelujah. I am sure, Paul said, that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel and i'm sure as our papa is coming this morning ay, 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 ay. are you ready put the hands together let's receive our papa dr abel damina glory glory somebody shout hallelujah father we rejoice that this morning we have this another opportunity to fellowship in the light of your world and we thank you that the entrance of your word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple. Our hearts are simply expecting to be flooded. So I decree that revelation knowledge is gifted everybody under the sound of my voice. I decree that your word comes with clarity. Your people are equipped. Your people are built up. Your people are edified. And we rejoice that by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. So we give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands, let's release our faith together as we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network. All of the social media community brothers and sisters online. All of the radio audience and all our campuses around the world. We are so glad to welcome all of you to the service this morning. Guys, get ready. It's going to be an exciting time of study in the word of his grace. Are you excited to be in the house this morning? Can we celebrate the word of God with a shout and a celebration? Glory! Amen! You can be seated with your sweet, smart self. Grab your phone, your notebook, and your Bible. Help us share the video, social media, community. Put them on all the platforms. Get the word. Let's get the word around the world. If you have your phones in the service, get ready to share the service. Let's get this word to the ends of the earth. Like I said to you last Sunday, for a few weeks, I want to do some revision classes because it's important to pay attention to the details of the things we have taught and the things that we still teach it. Brother Paul says, for me, it's not grievous, but for you, it is profitable and useful that we keep saying the same things over and over again. So grab your notebooks and your pen. Let's get into the study of God's word this morning. Amen. <clears throat> The book of 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse number 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So we began to establish that Brother Peter gave credence to the insight, the insight that Brother Paul operated with. He says, Brother Paul had some insight. There's a wisdom given to him. We think that Peter was just making a light statement. No, Peter wasn't joking. Peter wasn't making a light statement. We have seen that those who be handled Paul's explanation of First Thessalonians chapter 4, when we're examining the concept of the rapture, or what we call the resurrection from the dead, those who made light of that concept ended up communicating to the church world the world over a disappearance mentality 
which is not what brother Paul was communicating in the epistles. Obviously, they wrestled the scriptures to their own destruction. So you must understand brother Paul's language. I believe that Paul as a person should be studied as a cause. And I'm very serious about it. Brother Paul, I do not know if the people of his day were that intelligent. He was able to present Christianity to us in a way that is clear to us in the things he communicated. He is telling you in other words that Jesus Christ is truly Lord. He's teaching this when there is Rome and yet he talks about the kingdom of Christ. He talked about the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof under a Lord by the name of Caesar. That will make Agrippa submit. And Agrippa will look at Paul and say, you are beside yourself. Much learning makest thou mad. And that was because of brother Paul's soonnesses, which was out of this world. So you must understand Paul and how he writes. Is very important. In Second Peter, where we just read, he said, wisdom was given to brother Paul. That word wisdom is a Greek word, Sophia. Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, where you have the word Sophizo, S-O-P-H-I-Z-O, about salvation. The word Soteria. Then in verse 16 of that second Peter chapter 3, he says, as also in all his epistles. So he called the writings of brother Paul epistles. This is Peter speaking now, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Peter uses the word hard, not impossible. Hard to be understood. The Greek word dos nestos. Dos, nas, dos nestos. It simply means hard, difficult. You must take some time in dealing with the Pauline revelation. You must reason through. When Paul says meditate upon these things, you must take him seriously. Meditate upon these things. Is because he knows what he wrote. No other apostle prayed for his readers to have the spirit of revelation that their eyes be opened. Only brother Paul, because he knew what he was writing. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse number 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. That word is the word pistis, faith, pistis, Paul's faith. Faith in the Messiah. So the question is, did brother Paul ever contradict Jesus? Well, Paul never did. You really must know Paul. You must understand what Paul is saying. Let's go back to what Jesus said in John chapter 16 verse number 12. I have yet many things to say unto you. But you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. Jesus already gave room for what we have today as the Pauline letters. You cannot bear them now. It is a Greek called etipolos. That is, I have much to say. It thus means that there will be an advancement of Jesus' sayings. If you don't understand the use of language, you may think it's a contradiction. No, it's an advancement. Polos means great. I have yet a tie. Remaining so much to say. A tie polos. So therefore, you will find much more vocabulary, much more verbiage, much more explanation of the teachings of Jesus upon his resurrection much more upon his resurrection it will appear a contradiction if you don't pay attention to details much more to say but you cannot bear them now look at that john chapter 16 verse number 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things 
to come. Jesus uses the word hodegeo, hodegeo, H-O-D-E-G-E-O, hodegeo, a word used for the blind. He will guide you. When he is come, he will guide. Hodegio. Matthew chapter 15 verse 14. You will find that word used. Matthew 15 14. And in Luke 16 39. For further reading. Luke 16 39. But precisely it was used for Philip and the eunuch in their conversation. In Acts chapter 8 verse number 31. And he said... How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he will come up and sit with him. Some man should guide me. So the guide will be through the scriptures. The guide will be through the scriptures. So put this in your mind. I have yet many things to say unto you from the Old Testament... But you cannot bear them now. Hodegio. The spirit of truth will guide you into all the truth. The Old Testament. So we will say the spirit of truth will be the revelator or the revealer of the Old Testament scriptures. The spirit of truth will be the revealer of the Old Testament scriptures as a continuation of from or a continuation of things that Jesus taught and said. A continuation of things that Jesus taught and said. That means therefore he will guide through the Old Testament. You know whatever Jesus said was from the Old Testament. Whatever brother Paul will teach will be from the Old Testament. But it must be seen as an advancement, not a contradiction of the things that Jesus taught. Please, it's important to get this foundation. It will come in very handy in the next few days. And it's key to understand this. All right? Remember, we're dealing with the insight of Brother Paul. And it's important to get the background. Now, look at Jesus' words. Jesus throws those words at us. In our reasoning... He suggests the spirit of truth or pneuma aletia. Pneuma aletia in the Greek. Pneuma is as in pneuma or pneumatology. P-N-U-E-M-A aletia. A-L-E-T-I-A. In John chapter 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. If your Bible was mine, I will underline another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. This is Jesus' words. That he may abide with you forever. Another comforter. But before he says that, he now says, I will pray the Father. The word another comforter is the Greek word alos parakletos. Alos, A-L-L-O-S, parakletos, P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-O-S, a paraklete. Uh, he will give you another paraclete. Don't mind the amplified because the amplified has too many wordings for that verse. Then he says, he will abide with you forever. John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in shall be in you from verse 14 to 17 of that john chapter 14 jesus is talking about knowing the father he calls knowing the father as the work or the office of the allos paracletos the work or the office of the allos paracletos another allos means another of the same Another of the same. Alos paracletos. Another of the same. Okay? Another comforter or another paracletos. Another of the same. Alos. Another of the same. Look at John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
whom the father will send in my name whom the father will send in my name another comforter whom the father will send in my name the name the name not the label the office whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you now john 15 26 but when the comforter is come whom i will send whom i my father will send you another comforter now whom i will send unto you from the father jesus is teaching now look at his play of words lazarus is sleeping let's go and wake him up okay even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father he shall testify of me now he mentions comforter so often you wonder what he's talking about a comforter or a paraclete it simply means a helper or a guide or a standby look at john 16 verse number 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you he repeats it again then he repeats it again in verse 13 habit when he the spirit of truth is come all right now he talks about remembrance he will bring things to your remembrance now listen in other words jesus places a whole premium in his resurrection when he is come when he is come what will happen when he is raised from the dead so go back again to john 14 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you that therefore means that there will be a recall of all he has taught in the four gospels there will be a recall of all he has taught in the four gospels the remembrance will not be a memory short like oh he said so oh this is what he was saying that remembrance will be an explanation an explanation that is all you will have in the resurrection is an advanced explanation of the things jesus has spoken an advanced explanation of the things jesus has spoken so in as much as the audience of jesus were the jews no doubt bible interpretation always makes you respect the audience factor in interpreting facts and statements made but irrespective of the audience is a fact that the words of jesus are the words of the father the words of jesus are the words of the father and the words of jesus are revealing of the father the words of jesus are revealing of the father and what happened to us in the resurrection of jesus is that we now have an advanced explanation of the things he said we have an advanced explanation of the things he said now the person advancing the explanation is christ himself except you don't understand who is in the church is christ himself except you don't understand who is in the church so therefore when he rose from the dead that ministry began because when he rose from the dead the first thing he does is that he meets two of his disciples on the way to emmaus as he rose from the dead who were conversing over the death of jesus 
and over the witness of the women. Luke 24, 25, O fool, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Slow of heart to believe. So that means the challenge in John 16, 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. The challenge there is that they had a faith problem. They had a faith problem. Slow of heart to believe. Slow of heart to believe. The word there is foolish. Fools. Foolish. Actually, to be without reasoning properly. When we say you are a fool, it means you are not reasoning properly. Then it says slow of heart. The Greek word brados. B-R-A-D-U-S. It means you are sluggish. You are laid back. Slow of heart. Brado sluggish. So there are three words to take note of. Number one, fools. Number two, slow of heart. Number three, to believe. The word believe is the word pistis in the Greek. P-I-S-T-I-S. Pistis. Brados pistis. Oh fools. Brados pistis, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26 Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 27 And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The word daimenua in the Greek. To interpret, expounded, dimenua, to interpret or to give the meaning of what was said, or to show the meaning of what was said. Luke 24 27 says, Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted, he interpreted, expounded. So what he was saying. When he said he will guide you into all the truth in John 16, 13 had just begun on the way to Emmaus. It has just begun post-resurrection. So now the guidance into all the truth has started. The spirit of truth will do the guiding. But the spirit of truth is Jesus himself. Because he has just started guiding them into all the truth. Now, and those guys started claiming in Luke 24, 32. He says, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? Well, I disagree with them. He didn't open to them the scriptures. Rather, their minds were open to the scriptures. Their minds were open to the scripture. And brother Luke later recognized it in Luke 24, 45. Then opened he their own understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He opened their understanding. So it was not the scriptures that were opened. It was their understanding that was opened. Because the scriptures have always been opened. They have never been closed. Okay. Now. So therefore. We have what we call the advanced teachings of Jesus. Which he commenced right there in Luke 24. Through 40 days. So he goes through it to explain some things he was saying. Jesus wasn't saying anything different. He is not saying anything different. He is just explaining it in an advanced version. Advanced version. Notice again Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. It is the same thing I told you before that I am telling you now that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and 
in the prophet and in the Psalms concerning me. So the things I said while I was yet with you, that comes at us again. The things I said when I was yet with you, full slow of heart to believe while I was yet with you he will bring to your remembrance the things I have said to you these are the words which I spoke to you while I was yet with you are you watching? Okay. While I was yet with you, he therefore makes it imperative that anybody who will teach Christ must never depart from the things that were said in the four gospels. Anybody who is going to teach Christ must never depart from the things that were said in the four gospels because they are a remembrance. In other words, they are a further explanation. They are not a departure. They are a further explanation. They are not a departure. Sometimes we get lazy and we say, well, that was the four gospels. Jesus was under the law. They were not born again at that time. So that gives Jesus a tag as someone who didn't know the truth or who didn't teach it. But it's not true. You are the one struggling with the capacity to understand the advanced teachings of Jesus in the epistles. What I'm saying is, the epistles are the advanced explanations of what Jesus said in the four gospels. That's what we're saying. Because there's a consistency to biblical doctrine. And so it's not proper to just say it's the four gospels. No, it's the four gospels. Now we are under grace. Yet the eyewitnesses say everything Jesus did was grace. When John said we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth and of his fullness, have all we received grace and for grace. You cannot remove that from what he taught what he did and what he said you can't remove it so don't forget again jesus never used the word grace he never used it jesus hardly used the word salvation and jesus hardly used the word savior just like he never used the word grace yet grace salvation soteria Sota will now be the explanation of the spirit of truth. There will be the explanation of the spirit of truth. Of the things that Jesus said in the four gospels. There will be advanced explanation. That's what they are. They are not contradictory. They are explanatory. Don't forget again. When he said, while I was yet with you. So what led to the conversation of another comforter? John 14 verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Next verse. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, from henceforth, you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Next verse. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? 
Mm, I love Jesus, man. In other words, the teaching of the church has already been demonstrated in the earthly life of Jesus. The teaching of the church has already been demonstrated in the earthly life of Jesus. So what we have in the four gospels is the action of our doctrine. What we have in the four gospels is the action of our doctrine. So he that has seen me, he said, has seen the father. He that has seen Jesus has seen the father. Then he said, in that day, because of your unbelief and because of the way you sound now, in that day you will know. What will you know in that day? John 14, 20. At that day you shall know that I am in my father and you in me and I in you. You shall know this in that day because now if I say it you are in unbelief. You can be it. But in that day you will understand my communication in a more advanced and clear way. Don't forget that the teachings of Jesus are not contradictory or the epistles are explanatory. So therefore it means that the eyewitness account of Jesus is critical because the eyewitness account is important to us. You remember when we are talking about why do you believe the Bible? Why do you believe the God? It is a collection of historical, reliable material by eyewitnesses in the presence of other eyewitnesses. Critical, very critical to our faith as believers. Now, so it means therefore that the eyewitness account is critical because the eyewitness account is important to us. It is not the absolute insight. The eyewitness account is not the absolute insight. It is not the end of revelation, but it is the foundation of revelation. The eyewitness account is the foundation of revelation. Hence, the importance of what the apostles said and what they always did. Second Peter chapter 1 verse number 16. Brother Peter speaking concerning what we're just saying. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We didn't create, we did not fabricate a story with cunningly devised muthos, myths. When we made known unto you the parousia, the power and the parousia of the Lord Jesus, the coming of the Lord Jesus. But they were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They saw and touched him. First John 1.1 1, 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands, this witness is said, our hands have handled of the word of life. We have handled him. We know what we're talking about. That is, what they were all doing by saying those things. They were authenticating the Pauline revelation. Because without that, what will Paul say he is teaching? The writer of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, look at the way he puts it. Therefore, 
we ought to give the more energy to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. This is written to the Jewish audience. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, eyewitnesses, God also bearing them witness, but with signs, wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Confirmed by the Lord. So the words of the epistles will be found in the teachings of Jesus. Please, that's very important. The words of the epistles will be found in the teachings of Jesus by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard it. So the words of grace, the words of hope, the words of righteousness through faith we are said first by the Lord. They were said first by the Lord and confirmed unto us by them that heard it. God also bearing them witness with signs, wonders, diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. Look at Luke chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Next verse. Even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the world. They handed it to us, those that were eyewitnesses and apostles of the world. That is, they gave us these words. In other words, what I am bringing to you was confirmed by those who were ministers of the word, the eyewitnesses or the apostles. That's very important. Jesus therefore committed his teachings orally to these guys. He committed his teachings orally to these guys and I can tell you the ability to put it down today or to communicate it to others like we have in excellent fashion by Matthew Mark Luke John is supernatural that itself is supernatural yes it is eyewitness and it deals with the ability to have seen things and have the perception of them, I agree. But it is supernatural. That's why the qualification to be one of them, when they were trying to replace Judas, in Acts chapter 1 verse 19, put it up for me, and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much, that field is called in their proper tongue, Akel Dama, that is to say the field of blood. Next verse. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Next verse. Wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Next verse. Beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken off from us must one be ordained. To be a witness with us of his resurrection. He must have written down that qualification because he knew from what Jesus gave them as responsibility. What did Jesus tell him in Acts 1 8? Go and be witnesses. Luke 24 41. Witnesses. Go and be witnesses. So a witness is the guy who carries what you believe, who you are, what you say verbally and vocally and in his lifestyle pass it across to the world that's a witness the guy who carries what you believe who you are what you say verbally and vocally and in his own lifestyle passes it across to the world and therefore he must qualify by knowing what you say and what you teach he must qualify by knowing what he says what you say and what you teach 
And Paul couldn't be called that kind of witness. Brother Paul couldn't be called that kind of witness because he wasn't there. He wasn't physically present. And so he rolls out the qualification of replacing Judas. That means he also must hear the explanation directly from Jesus' mouth. He must hear the explanation, which Jesus did for 40 days. He must have been in that audience. Whoever will replace Judas must have this capacity. So Jesus therefore commits his preaching. That is what it is said that the first mode of communication for many early years of the church was called the Karigima. The Karigima or the Keruso. That is words. Karigima or Keruso. That is words. They didn't have the benefit of websites or written form. It was words. So there had to be the witness of his resurrection. And church, I need you to understand this. That they witnessing the resurrection is not that they saw him rise from the dead. They saw him rise from the dead and they sat down for 40 days and had him explain every concept in details by himself. That means by himself, he guided them into all the truth by himself. The spirit of truth. So which means the epistles which are the advanced teachings of Jesus is what we call the spirit of truth. So that means the way the epistles will say it is the truth. So if the epistles does not comment on anything from Moses down to the four gospels, we also don't comment. Because the spirit of truth did not recognize that enough to comment. Because the resurrection comes with the explanation of Christ. It's in the resurrection that we have the spirit of truth. And Paul will put it like this in Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Next verse. Which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures next verse concerning his son jesus christ our lord which was made of the seed of david according to the flesh next verse and declared to be the son of god how with power how according to the spirit of holiness how by the resurrection from the dead he calls it the gospel of God, which he promised afore by the mouth of his holy prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ. He is marked out the son of God by the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. So the resurrection, therefore, of Jesus is revelation in itself. The resurrection of Jesus is revelation in itself. That's why Paul will say, how will you say that Jesus was not raised from the dead? The moment you say that, our faith is vain. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Verse 17. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. It is the resurrection that explains Christianity. It is the resurrection of Jesus that explains Christianity. We can therefore call the resurrection of Jesus the Allos Paracletos. The resurrection of Jesus is the Allos Paracletos or the Numa Aletia. Because what is called Allos Paracletos, the same help, the same strength, the same power, 
the same insight, the same grace, however, now is living in you. Is living in you. The same help, the same strength, the same power, the same insight, the same grace is now living in you. And the spirit of truth, allows Paracletos, Christ raised from the dead. He didn't rise from the dead to go to Galilee. His resurrection is ascension. Yadosh. He didn't rise from the dead to go to Galilee. His resurrection is an ascension because he now lives in the man that he saves. He now lives in the man that he saves. Don't forget he is a sota. Eh? He must have claimed something. He must own man. He must own man's heart. And in that same act of owning you, you have the allos paracletos. And Paul doesn't use all that. Allos paracletos. Numa, Aletia, those were all Jesus' verbiage. All of those were Jesus' speakings to people that couldn't bear it. Now Paul comes in the spirit of truth post-resurrection. He does not use all that grammar. He simply says, in Christ. In Christ is Paul's signature of saying, Alos, Paracletos, Numa, Aletia, he will live in you. All of that is in Christ or Christ in you. Those are terms for the resurrection or terms for the ascension. So put the word allos paracletos or put the word another comforter. And what you have is the word in Christ. That's what you have. Allos paracletos or another comforter. In the spirit of truth, it will be pronounced as what? In Christ. Because Jesus says that the allos paracletos will be in that day, you will know that I am in. In that day, when the spirit of truth has arrived, what you will know by what I am saying now is that I am in. So all Jesus said now, will be simply explained in plainness of spiritual that anguity as what? In Christ or Christ in. Now also remember, so Paul's verbiage is to actually say what Jesus was saying in those clear terms will be this. Listen carefully, if you miss this, you don't have him in the service. By saying, I go to the Father, by Jesus saying that, it means I will live in you. Just like Lazarus is asleep. Let's go and wake him out. He says, if he sleeps, he does well. Uh, no, he's dead. <laughs> okay? So when he says, I go to the Father, what it means is I will live in you. By saying, I will give you another comforter, what he is basically saying is, you know, I am in you. Brother Paul just uses the word in Christ. And they are saying just the same thing. So he's basically saying that Christ that was seen in the streets of Galilee is dead. He rose from the dead. And his resurrection is proven by his soteria. Remember his territory. His resurrection is proven by his territory. The proof that he has risen, he knows. Remember, remember, he is sota because of conquest. He is sota because he has defeated. He has won. And as a sota, after winning his opponent and defeating his opponent, he rises as an emperor. And as an emperor, he must have a territory to claim. So in his resurrection, he claimed his territory. 
The claim of his territory is called soteria. I'm tying everything now. I hope you are catching the claim of his territory is called soteria. So, his resurrection is proven by his territory amongst men in his kingdom. So, Paul is not contradicting Jesus. Paul is explaining Jesus. If eyewitness account was enough, because when Jesus came to the earth, it was God that came to the earth. His character, his teachings are of God. That is, when Jesus spoke, it was God speaking. Jesus is God revealing that it is God talking. God didn't become greater in the resurrection. Therefore, Paul's explanation, which is his revelation, is to explain and authenticate everything that Jesus said has happened. Everything that Jesus said has happened or is happening or will happen. And this is the thing that baffles people. The fact that he uses different vocabulary. But he has to because Jesus himself could not communicate beyond how he did. But then comes the spirit of truth. Which is the advancement Peter calls Sophia. According to the insight, the wisdom given to Paul. So Paul simply laid bare the things that Jesus did and said. So do not read the teachings of Jesus like they were not for you. Read them. But read them with the lenses of the spirit of truth. Paul never said, I am writing about Jesus. Rather, he calls his ministry, when it pleased God to reveal his son in me. To reveal his son in me. I did not confer with flesh and blood, to reveal his son. So he is not trying to guess. If you believe Jesus rose from the dead, if you believe Jesus rose from the dead, then you will see him handle the pen of Paul. To write the things that he never said in the way he is saying them now, in the letters of Paul. So it's not contradictory, it's advancement. He is putting much more vocabulary, much more verbiage to the things that Jesus said. So you will call Paul's letters, Christ's letters. That's what they are. Because Jesus gave that rule. I call Paul's letters, the Allos Paracletos. I call Paul's letters, the spirit of truth. I call Paul's letters the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Hey. That's why Paul will say, who has known the mind of the Lord that he may explain him. I like the Greek word. It's the word sombabaizo. Sombabaizo. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may explain him. Then he said, but we have the explanation of Christ. The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ means the reasoning of Christ. That is the mind of Christ from the Old Testament. Which he also called elsewhere the doctrine of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Where is the mind of Christ? The epistles. Where is the mind of Christ? The spirit of truth. Where is the mind of Christ? Written by brother Paul. It is also the doctrine of Christ. We have. <laughs> we are not going to have. We have the mind of Christ. So when I read Jesus saying something like, 
Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Blessed are they that mourn. What is Jesus saying? Stand on your feet. So we are going to be interfacing between the teachings of Jesus and how Paul interpreted them in the epistles. Are you still here? That's what we're going to be adventuring. Say, I have the mind of Christ. I am in Christ. He is in me. We are in a relationship that can never be separated. I in him, he in me. This is that day. This is that day. Jesus said, in that day, you shall know that I in you. So even when you pray now, where will your prayer be answered? In you. Where is Christ? Who is Christ? Who is Christ? Christ is God. Christ is God. Who is Christ? Where is Christ? Where is God? So when you pray now, from where will it be answered? So instead of waiting to hear something from outside, when you are praying, where should you be listening from? Christ in you, the hope of glory. And one thing is sure, if he's in you, it means his answers to the things that you are saying will be rising from inside. So instead of looking around, you should be looking inside. Solution is inside. Direction is inside. Answers are inside. Can you lift your hands and begin to give him praise in this building? Just open your mouth and begin to praise God wherever you're watching, wherever you're connected to us. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to praise him. Begin to thank him for answers. Begin to thank him for access. Begin to thank him for revelation. Begin to thank him that his word is building you up. Begin to thank him that his word is the light that shines and lightens your path. Le krota sokalina mata le ne moja kaya. Egebo zoko lo de bombro le grada da de le de boja ka. Mangra gada boroko tone kele ne masoka le na mana gado golo do bozoke ya. Hiana. Membro gadangle ne bobo boroko to se kele ne brenda ke kele ne mombo roko tone kele ne bobro gado boze kele ne bebe rege de gay. Le bro do zoko le de babro gadong le de baboro kotuna kaline mamambra gada baraka to ne keline mamamaline mama yana gada gea. Rise up higher and higher like an edifice. Begin to speak solutions. Begin to speak answers. Le gro do suka la de brenda kakola na mambro gadang le de mambro gadobo zeke le ne menenge le ne mamoja. Le gro gadobo zeke le de babra gadabo roko tu na kali ne mangra gadambo roko tu na kali ne ma. Henge bo zeke le de babra gadaba lato babo roko tu li bababara katu na kali ne magaya. Ege bo zekele de babra gadaba zekele de bambra gadonga la de bo zekele de mamaya. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Le gro do zoko lo de bro na katole ne membre ge de boro kotu na kali ne mememe. Le bro do zeke le de bre na kakolo de bobra ge de geli ne mo. Enge bo zoko lo de babre ge de gele ne mo so kele ne maya. Le gala daba rakato menge le ne maneka karato seke le barakata. Zeko lo de babra ge do boro kotu menge le ne mo. Mambro gadobo zekele de bere agaba zokolo agaba zokolo engele ne mondo lo bro na kedele de babre gede borokotu na kele ne mama ya nagaya praise you father. Lift your hands and begin to praise, begin to bless him, begin to thank him for direction, begin to thank him for growth, begin to thank him for revelation, begin to thank him for increase, begin to thank him for strength on your inside, begin to thank him for the supply of the spirit and the supply of insight, the supply of solutions. Zekele de ba braga dambo rokato na kale de ba legara to sekele de ba yana. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, 
Father, we rejoice. We rejoice that this morning we have this opportunity to learn, to grow, and to be equipped in accurate, precise knowledge. And we thank you that armed with knowledge, we rule in this world. We receive the abundance of grace. We receive the gift of righteousness. And we celebrate the rights, the rights, the rights that are ours in Christ. The right to a relationship with God that is uninterrupted. The right to access, access, wherein we stand in this grace and rejoice. And we thank you, Father, that we have the right to rule over circumstances and situation. The right to rule over devils and demons. The right to reign in life. The right to rule in life. The right to manifest our sonship and walk upon the earth as sons filled with all of God's grace and abilities. So sick bodies be healed. Sick bodies be healed. Sick bodies be healed. In the name of Jesus. And we command challenges be dissolved. Challenges be dissolved. Confusion be terminated. Clarity of direction. Precision and accuracy. In the name of Jesus. Father we rejoice that as we go about manifesting and demonstrating your glory. Souls are saved. The gospel is preached with power. Confirmation with signs, wonders and miracles. And we rejoice that disciples are raised all over the nations of the earth. Because the sons of God are manifesting. And the sons of God are fulfilling their obligation. And fulfilling their responsibilities in the advancement of the royal mandate of Jesus. And we give you praise for fruits that abound. And we thank you for the blessing. This week is a week of exploits. Many sided exploits. Barriers terminated. Crooked paths are made straight. Valleys are exalted. Mountains are brought down. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for great grace that is upon your people. And we give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer in the building shouts that amen on a note of finality. Well, go ahead and celebrate revelation knowledge in this house. Is that how you celebrate revelation knowledge? Glory! Amen. Grab your kingdom, I mean your, your honor offerings. Let's give in honor of the word. When we hear the word in this house, we honor the word with our substance. We honor the word with our, our monies. We are responsible sons of God. And we are responsible children who have understood that we are a people who walk in honor. Honor is our culture. And so when we hear the word of God, we honor the word of God with our substance. We honor the word of God with our givings. Our givings is a show of our value. That we are placing value on what we have had. Jesus went to his hometown and could do nothing for them because they never valued him. He couldn't do anything for any of them. Only a few people he healed. But he went to places where people received him with honor and it was an eruption of the grace of God. When we honor the word, when we honor the gift of grace made available to us by Jesus Christ, we take off and we receive from the supply. It is called the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. Paul would say, when I come, I will come in that fullness. And when you honor that arrival or the coming of that gift, you draw from the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. Glory to God. Lift up your honor offerings this morning. Father, we give in faith and we give with joy. Thank you for the privilege of honoring the word. And we rejoice that our offerings are a sweet smell and we celebrate what Christ has done in us, what Christ has done for us, what Christ is doing through us. Thank you for the blessing. And we give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Now listen, the online community, all of the Power City campuses, our brothers and sisters on television and radio, we are not signing you off because as we take the offerings, 
we'll be joining you know the ask the counselor segment where we'll answer questions and if you have questions in the building you write them the ushers will move around during ask the counselor you can give your questions we want to answer them because the essence of teaching is so that you can understand so if there's anything you don't understand you ask questions so that you are well tutored so that you are able also to teach the same to others. Can I have a good amen? So those online, the banking details are scrolling. You give your own honor offerings. All of the banking details are there on the screen. The radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, will read the bank accounts for you in a few minutes. And we'll just come anywhere on the pulpit. We drop our offerings as we celebrate. Hit the music. Let's do it. As we give in honor of Jesus. Glory to God. shout hallelujah. hallelujah amen please be seated one minute i want to use this opportunity i don't want to keep you standing to thank every one of you for celebrating me on my birthday amen, amen. the online community i appreciate you so much thank you for reaching out in spiritual gifts in material gifts i appreciate every single contribution that you made to make me happy that day. The happiness will last me for another year. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're taking our kingdom investments and general worship offering this morning. And I want you to prepare whatever you have laid aside in your heart by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because you see, if we don't give from the promptings of the Holy Ghost, then we're giving in the flesh. Amen. Amen. So you have your general worship offering. And those of you who have your kingdom investment, we're going to come out at the same time. You put the kingdom investment in the basket and the general offerings on the altar here. And those of you on the, in the uh, campuses, make sure you do the same. Amen. Amen. Let's rise on our feet again. Father, we thank you that we have this opportunity to give towards propagating the gospel in our time. People gave and we are able to hear today and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Our giving also is going to make establishment of your kingdom, of your truth in the hearts and souls of men. Thank you that as we give, we also go out. Therefore, every single person participating today, that you will realize the travail of your soul and seeing souls saved in the mighty name of Jesus. And you will have satisfaction in the spirit and in your body, in your finances, in your health, in your families. You will have satisfaction everywhere in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And then we, you know, go ahead and give our offerings. In the basket, kingdom investment, on the altar here, general offering.
stated, let's just get ask the counselor off and flying around the world. The traditional opening announcements, the bank accounts, the account name remains Power City International. There are two bank accounts. I start with UBA on this edition of Ask the Counselor. By the way, it's season four of Ask the Counselor, and it's just day three live. 139-26465, that's for UBA, 139-26465, UBA, Power City International. FCMB Bank number 229826820282628. 229826820228. That's for FCMB. Account name remains Power City International. That's announcement number one. Two, quickly, quickly, yeah, I'm guessing we have uh, about 15 minutes to play around with for phone calls. So I'll start taking calls 10 minutes into the program. So that number, if you're calling from outside Nigeria, remember plus two three four. Otherwise, it's just 806 800 9939. Just give us a call or two directly from any part of the world. Remember again, if you're calling from Nigeria, it's just simply 806 800 9939. But if you're doing from outside Nigeria, I'm sure everyone now knows that, just um, take away the first O and add plus two three four. You want to do an SMS or two, the same process, the same ritual, the same procedure, plus 234, otherwise it's simply 0703-691-8642, or you send an email or two to ask the counselor now at gmail.com. For sponsorship, for, for partnership, for, for support, just dial up the program hotline, plus 234. Again, if you're doing from outside Nigeria, otherwise simply 0803-275-61. Oh, four. or you send an email or two to the, if you like the email address, that's like hotline for the program, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. Abel, of course, is simply uh, DR. Okay, Glow Mama was here just before me to say thank you for a massive, uh, massive, massive, massive uh, 20, 22nd birthday last Thursday, and the world just stood still for this special woman. Can we put our hands together again for her? And I'm excited that Global Mama, Dr. Rachel Damina, is in church. Put your hands together for her. And I, I hope that the cake still, um, I hope that some of the cakes still left. Some of us are quite interested in it. And I, and I say that on behalf of so many of us who don't have the voice to say so or the courage thereof. Okay, so um, the resident pastor, um, ever hardworking, ever loyal, if uh, conscious is also here, I'm excited that Pastor Presokun with Elder Uyime, his dear wife, they are both in church. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have noticed it, but the triple J plus ladies, the ladies from Neptune 3 Studios, they are so organized. Um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to having them. I say this now so that they can never escape from it. I'm looking forward to having them on a live um, joint radio and television and online interview. So I would ask them, they're so organized. When they come to church, the first seats in the first position, they say, and they never change their position. I don't know how many people have noticed that. They're in church today, give it up for them. Thank you. And then, of course, my producer is not um, around. My producer, we've sent him to go and check uh, the other areas, the other territories who want to conquer so that I can also become emperors like Christ. That's what Global Bar taught us, you know. So um, but we have a standing producer. Uh, um, and uh, it's very nice to see her. Dami Lola Adigun is in the house. We'll be working in charge of the production team. Now, my name is Michael Bush. The big man of the moment is A. And that is the intercontinental global barber. Dr. Ebel. Damina! The global, global intercontinental. <laughs> 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 no more, but you now combine my two titles. Don't and like then you return don't to like my own. My <laughs> no, but so nice to see you. Nice to see you this okay, morning. Okay, no, but even before we do um, opening prayers, I don't know. This is such massive testimony coming from Bush House, Nigeria. I don't know how you direct whether I want it said or not, but my own is just to hand it over to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. This is a radio license Absolutely. for the Bush House. Bush House man, yeah, sure. So we have our own radio station. Absolutely. Absolutely. Congratulations, Absolutely. man. Congratulations. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
It's in the back. Wow. Yes, and we now have our own frequency. That's right. And um, very soon. So in a short while. Global Baba. Bada Bola. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Global Baba, let's just um, set the stage with a quick opening prayer, especially again for Ukraine. Let's pray together. Not just Ukraine. I think the whole world needs prayer. Absolutely. Because right now I hear there is a threat yes. of cyber attack Absolutely. on UAE. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's really serious. Absolutely. So all the United Arab Emirates, you know, they're all shaking in their boots because there's, there's an attack coming on that place. Cyber. Absolutely. And I'm sure this cyber thing is going to, you know, is going to go around the world. And Global Baba, you know, um, the man behind, I, I, don't, I don't like to dignify him, even in my writings, even in my broadcast. I don't like to mention his name because I just think he's wrong. But the man behind the attack in um, Ukraine is going to be emboldened if he succeeds in Ukraine. Mm. He might go to other yeah. neighboring countries yeah. and all of that. It's a spirit, and we need to pray against it. It's a spirit. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not concerned about the political aspect Absolutely. of all that, that whole thing. Mm. Go beyond politics. Mm. Look at human lives. People dying every day. Children. Children women. dying. Women dying. The elderly dying. And this guy is not bothered. Not at all. He's, really He's not more. bothered. He's sitting down in the comfort of his house, eating well, living well. His children are secured in a bunker somewhere. And people are dying for what? What is the reason? There's nothing on earth that justifies killing people. There's nothing on it that justifies murder. Not just murder, but mass murder. That's the spirit of the devil. Leave politics. Let's deal with... We're talking about human lives. You can't buy back human lives. You can't replace human lives. There are husbands and wives that will never meet. There are children and parents that will never meet anymore. They just woke up and their whole life is scattered. There are churches and pastors that have been sent out. No more ministry. They are first of all running to survive for their lives. For whatever it's what, war is not the solution. War is not the solution, you know. Um, and, and that's the spirit of the world. The Bible calls it the spirit that walketh in the children of disobedience. That's the same spirit Jesus spoke about when he says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. For whatever political interest is not worth the lives of men. That's what gave good luck Jonathan, our former president, world celebration. When he said, My political ambition not is worth. not worth the blood of anybody. I would rather just drop it and walk back home. And the whole world celebrated a hero in that man. Yeah, the whole world celebrated a hero in that man. You know, um, good luck Jonathan could have insisted. He's the commander-in-chief. He could have asked the army, the police, and everybody, make sure I remain in, in power, you know. But he said, no, my political ambition is not worth the blood of anybody. So for whatever, the, it, it, whatever you know, the ambition or interest is, you know, we shouldn't be wasting human lives. So the spirit of the devil is involved, and we've got to pray and take authority right now. In the name of Jesus, Satan, we come against you. We come against you, Satan, you devourer, you killer, you destroyer of men. In the name that is above every name, 2,000 years ago, Jesus defeated you. He spoiled principalities and powers. And he has given us power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. And nothing shall by any means hurt. Nothing shall hurt in all of my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. Nekodu nananga. Lebronda gele di badagoda bajo kolo no mo sekedia. You that spirit that is behind destruction, we command you to cease in your maneuvers. Cease in your maneuvers. Cease in your maneuvers. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask for a divine intervention. We ask for a miracle. We ask for salvation. We ask for the salvation of God to be made manifest between Ukraine and Russia. And between all the agencies and agents of darkness that are carrying out all of these murderous and wicked acts against humanity. Lord, we command a stop to this in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the brethren in Ukraine that have been scattered all over. We ask that among them, believers, Christians, they will take that mandate wherever they are, they are thrown to. That that will open up a world of ministry. That they will go abroad preaching and teaching the word of his grace in the name of Jesus. We pray for strength. 
we pray for for grace we pray for lord that their spirits are set on fire that lord even as they are dispersed from their country they will see it as a mandate to preach the gospel around the nations of the earth and we thank you lord that the church is not backing down but the church is marching forward Amen. and we give you praise for answered prayer Amen. we pray for aquibum we pray for the rest of the world we decree that the devil has no no hold over this world we stop him in his tracks in the name of jesus Amen. so mightily grows the world and prevails in the nations of the earth in jesus name we pray amen. and everyone says a powerful amen 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 global barber mm -mm. yeah let's go okay so the last time we hear live on uh, ask the counselor we spent the night here in uyo of course this is where we are number 98 wangiba road in the heart of the capital city of akwaibo in the deep south of nigeria I count on the west coast of africa so we're going to be starting here from sister gift friday rice right from the main bowl here Hello, Daddy. If the heaven and the earth will pass away, that is be dissolved with fire, according to 2 Peter 3.10. Please, where will believers and Jesus be at that very time, Global Baba? Well, you know, like we've said, those who died in Christ will be raised incorruptible. We that are alive and remain will be changed. We won't be here. This world is not fit for us. We will be in the immaterial realm, the heavenlies, not here. And then this earth and the heavens, you know, right into outer space. It will be burnt with fervent heat because the fall of Adam corrupted everything. And then a new heaven and a new earth will be created. So we're not going to be here. We're going to be gone. And then those who don't have Christ, of course, they'll find their way into the lake of fire that burn it with brimstones. Which, which is the second death, Satan and all his demons will all be there with them, you know, and they will be born to ashes. If you, if you get my teaching on Soteria season 5, I dealt with all of that reality in Soteria 5. Okay, that is still from you, still from the main bowl of the church here. Irreplaceable nobles writes, Hello, Daddy, please I want to know what happens to believers when we go out to preach the gospel to them. That is, do believers gain more knowledge too? Can we, the preachers, rejoice that such believers have been saved by God? If yes or no, Daddy, please, I need more clarity. And what happens to the believer when the word of God is presented to them and they receive it? Well, when you go out to preach, believers who are already saved, you give them more knowledge. You're able to establish them in the truth that is in Christ. Because there are two things. Number one, God will have all men to be saved. And number two, to come to the knowledge of the truth. Two different things. The first one is as important as the second one, and the second one is as important as the first one. So if we come to preach, you're already saved. We still teach you the word of God and answer questions you may have in your Christian journey in a bid to establish you in the faith that you already have in Christ Jesus. And if you are not saved, well, it's an opportunity to get you saved. The person who goes out to preach comes back with joy. The joy is in the fact that, number one, people are saved, and number two, people are established in the knowledge of Christ which is God's desire for all men. Okay, still from the main bowl here, Basi Basi, rice, please, Global Baba, i like more explanation on the rapture. Well, what we call the rapture is not really in the Bible. There's no word as rapture in the Bible. It's a coinage of theologians to explain a concept of the, of the change that will happen to our bodies, where our bodies will be changed from mortality to immortality. That change is what is called a rapture. You know, another word used in the Bible is the word cut up. We shall be cut up. We shall be changed. We shall be cut up. And that cut up, if you, if you follow what I taught in this In Christ Reality series, cut up doesn't mean disappearance. It means a change of location. So when you're cut up, you live here and you appear here. So when we are cut up, we will disappear from this earth and we will appear in the immaterial with the immaterial body. That's what it simply means. Okay, Global about this to quickly continue. The free life of Ask the Council of Season 4 from Power City International, right here at the Global Headquarters, number 98 Wangiba Road in Uyo, the capital of Akwaibom in the deep south of Nigeria. Global about we as believers will live eternally in a new earth without the contradictions of this earth today. Does the concept of health, which is eternal, health, which is eternal, 
death, that separation, mean that the devil, his angels and unbelievers will cease to exist? Anonymous. Well, it doesn't mean they will cease to exist. Now, um, that has to be properly explained. That question doesn't have a yes or no. It is explanation that will bring out the answer. But like I have taught in Soteria 5, you need to get Soteria 5. Soteria season 5, I spoke about hell. I spoke about, you know, um, I spoke about uh, the lake of fire. They are not the same. There is nothing like hell fire. There is hell, then there is the lake of fire. Hell is, does not have fire. Hell is a place of outer darkness. That is where Jesus went. That is where people who don't have Christ go to. They go to hell, not fire. Hell, a place of outer darkness, waiting for the judgment of the last day, where Satan and his demons will be bound and thrown into the lake of fire. All right, that lake of fire is the final destination of those who didn't believe in Jesus. And the Bible tells us that lake of fire even has a bottomless pit. So when they are thrown in there for judgment, people who didn't have Christ will be burned to ashes. People who didn't have Christ. That does not include Satan and his demons. However, for the details and the exegesis, Soteria, season 5. Okay, Global Bar, let's engage gear and take this longish one sent by a lady who drops her name, but I'm going to, since she's right here in church, I'm going to just hide her identity and take it as I see it. Hello, Global Baba. Thank you, Global Baba, for your labor of love in green us. Global Baba, during your teaching on leading and perception and following the inward witness, my eyes were opened to too many realities. There were things I thought I could get away with, but I was wrong. One of it is about my relationship, Global Baba. I dated this guy and had a mindset that I could change him, make him born again, and get committed in ministry, but I was wrong. Along the line, Global Baba, I got a child out of wedlock. Then when I listened to you, I became restless. I have not been fulfilled in any way because he drags me backwards whenever it has something to do with the word of God. And an inward witness during your teaching when you said one could make mistakes in business and money and change, but not in marriage and ministry. The inward witness um, was that the spirit, was the spirit talking to me, uh, was the spirit speaking through me that I am not married to him yet and can still leave that relationship, Lou Baba, but as I listened more to you, you also said that I needed to subject the perception uh, or my perception to the counsel of our pastor or an elder whose mind has, not, has been sharpened and who is not in any way emotionally involved so we can be sure it is the spirit and not our mind. Thus, my request now is for you to counsel me, Global Barber. All right, whoever wrote will be glad to counsel you. So what you do is at the end of the service, uh, meet with Pastor Praise at the end of this service. Pastor Praise will organize a counseling for you and we will spend time to talk with you and uh, see how we go forward. You know, uh, that's, that's just the answer. Okay. Um, I, I still have one more intro. I'll just quickly take that. And um, this one doesn't give a name. Again, says, Dear Global Baba, please kindly enlighten us what will happen to our forefathers who did not hear the word of salvation, the words of salvation and believe in Jesus, but they lived and died like that. I ask, shall they be raptured? Shall they inherit heaven? And two, when shall they be taught to, to believe? Three, if they will, where can we find that in the Bible? Well, the question you ask in theology is called assumption. We don't assume that there are people that didn't hear the gospel. We don't assume at all. Moreover, Brother Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 1, that even people that didn't have the law, there was their conscience which was a law to them. In fact, Brother Paul even went further to say that even those that didn't hear the gospel had a knowledge of God, but some of them refused to retain God in their hearts. So God gave them up to their vile affections. So there's nobody that will claim that he didn't, have, he didn't hear about God. There's no such person. Because one way or the other, the gospel of Christ has been communicated beginning from Genesis till today until the end of time. Remember in Eden... Adam had the gospel. The gospel was communicated to Adam. 
the, not the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the gospel. That was the gospel. And man made the choice for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the rejection of God's offer of life. So, all through the ages, the gospel has been communicated in different forms. In some generations, it came in types and shadows. In some other generations, it came as a prophecy of the prophets. And it came in different forms. That's why Paul, I mean the writer of Hebrews will say, At sundry times, in diverse manners, the prophets spoke to the fathers. So the gospel has been preached and people are hearing it all over the world and over the times and over the centuries till the end of time. Okay, we're flying straight Global Bar Bar next from Uyo, that's through the Big Tota International Airport, straight to Lagos, Nigeria. We're going to next door, Ogun State. Hello, Global Bar Bar. I appreciate you, sir, for your labor in the body of Christ, for giving clarity to the scripture so that we all grow in knowledge and understanding. I cannot be listening to your messages and make sure I follow all the series, even after your life teachings on YouTube. My question, Global Baba, is the teaching in the second service of the 21st of November last year. You said the study in the word, in the book of Timothy, doesn't mean we must read the Bible by ourselves, but to be diligent in our ministerial assignment. You said we're supposed to listen to teachers of the word of God and that the variants um, stop searching after seeing what the apostles preach as true. I'm sorry, sir. I really didn't get that part clearly. Is my personal study of the Bible useless? If I don't get into the habit of personal study, how do I know if what is preached or taught is correct according to Bible standards? For instance, how do I know if my pastor, the pastor in my local church, not power city now, is deviating or misinterpreting the scripture? Global, can I just punctuate this here and take this first caller? Hello. Are you there? Hello. Yeah, you are here. I can hear you. Hello. Are you there? Can I, can I continue? Okay, let's continue, Global Baba, with this one from Dr. Okweyemi Adeyanju from Abiyogutagun State. It says, doesn't mean that all my spiritual growth has to depend on what I listen to from a good teacher like you, sir. Is it not possible I also receive knowledge and understanding as I read through the Bible? I'm sorry if I mix that up. Kindly throw more life, sir. As a matter of fact, sir, after I became born again, I made it a habit to be studying the Bible which really helped my growth and to be able to distinguish myself from errors and falsehood. When I came across your teachings in the year of our Lord 2016, one of the things that made me hook up to you is that most of the understandings and interpretations I had were confirmed by your teachings, and they are also helping me to be able to interpret the Bible easily and correctly. Thanks, uh, as I await your explanation, sir. Your daughter in Christ, Global by just for your thoughts. This first caller, hello. Hello. Yeah, we are waiting. Hello. Okay, global, but let's, let's just proceed. Yes. Well, I'm sure the person didn't listen very carefully. First of all, there's no way we will ask you not to study the Bible. However, in studying the Bible, you can't study the Bible alone. In Acts chapter 8, the eunuch asks, how can I accept some man should guide me? So that is why God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring teachers to his body to perfect the saints to do the work of ministry so the body of Christ is edified. So what we do is we teach you the word. When we teach you the word, you take the word and you sit down and study the word. But first of all, you have to be taught. When you are taught, you go home and study but in the context as you just quoted, the word study there was the word spudazo, which doesn't mean study as in study, but diligent. Be diligent to show yourself approved unto God. So that's what we're doing. We were just doing exegesis as it relates to the context in which we were teaching. We are not dealing with the general word study. We are dealing with the context of the scriptures we were explaining in that particular service. Bless you. This caller, hello. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties. Hello. Hello. Yeah, many thanks for joining us. I know where you're calling from. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, good morning. Yeah, welcome to the program. You know where you're calling from. Go ahead. 
Yeah, we can hear you. Just go ahead. Okay, we're having some really, really technical um, difficulties, but not to worry. We we'll sort that out. Also, so global Baba from Ogun State. Let's just take by road to Mina, Niger State. Hello, Global Baba. You have such eye-opening answers to many questions I've had. During your message uh, on the 6th of March 2022, you said that because heaven will be destroyed, that that heaven has no physical representation. What about Revelations 21:1, where there is the description of a new heaven and a new earth? What's the new heaven here? Thank you, Global Baba. Well, again, you, you, you said new heaven, so it, it definitely cannot be this heaven because this heaven cannot be called a new heaven. So stay with that for now, that there is a new heaven and a new earth, which is not this one. Keep it somewhere and keep growing. In the process of time, you will understand. I guess this still comes from this anonymous sender who fortunately writes from Power City Campus in Mina, Niger State. It says, the story of Lazarus and the rich man in the Old Testament, how the rich man pleaded to be sent back to the earth to tell his brothers and the entire story. Was that meant to be an imagery? Well, Jesus was given a parable. And what is a parable? A parable is a mode of communication that has facts, that has fictions, and that has uh, a lesson. So in a parable, you don't take the facts and fictions, you look for the lesson. The lesson in that parable was that nobody is sent from the dead to preach. It is only the living that preach the gospel. That's the lesson in that narrative. Okay, Global Bar, let's just quickly connect uh, Abuja from Niger State so we can fly outside of Nigeria. I think we should just say that um, we're heading to Tanzania. Hello, Global Baba. I bless you so much. My name is Blessing. No, my name is Daniel Nte. I arrive from Arusha, Tanzania. Your teachings make my eyes open every day. I understand easily the Bible now. I love the name Christocentric book. Also, your teachings make me not to bother God with minor things because I now know what to do. Glory! Glory! Okay, still from the continent of Africa, let me see what I can squeeze in another one. This one comes, no, let's leave Africa now. Let's leave Africa now. Let's go to Zan Z Zambia. Hello, Global Baba. I want to thank God for using you. My name is Pastor Joseph. I write from Zambia. Two questions. How does the church grow in Christ Jesus? How does one become a strong leader in Jesus Christ to do his works? Thank you. Global Baba, just, just two questions. Hold your thoughts. This last caller, I guess. Hello. Hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name are you calling from? My name is Eyo. I'm calling from Moron. Yes, say you go ahead. Yes, so I want to. I want to find out if the what is happening in Ukraine and uh, Russia is a prophecy in the Bible. How will you reconcile that? Well, I don't know about prophecy in the Bible, but I know that the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. What's going on in Russia and Ukraine is human greed, human greed, human selfishness, human wickedness finding expression in the taking away of human lives in the pursuit of conquering a territory. That's what is happening in Ukraine. And so that's all I know. I, I don't know about prophecy. You know better, you know. <laughs> Global Baba. Yeah. He knows better. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Global Baba. Because he must know better to be able to say his prophecy. Absolutely. Okay, so Global Baba, let's just fly from the continent of Africa to Europe now. And Germany, here we come. I'm called Atta Dakwa. Emmanuel, I write from Duisburg in Germany, Global Baba. I'm a regular follower of the good work you do in the kingdom and want to applaud you greatly for your labor. Today, however, I wish to humbly ask Global Baba to pray for my wife who started showing symptoms of Parkinson's syndrome, which has persisted for quite a while. I've been praying for her, but they, the symptoms are persisting. I was nearly out of depression going to say I don't know what to do now when I remember that as believers, we always know what to do. At that point, something told me to write to you, Global Baba, and to ask you to pray for my wife. Uh, he leaves uh, her WhatsApp number. She can be called all the time. On the other hand, if there is any number we can reach, Global Baba, please share with us, counting on your usual cooperation. Just uh, sincerely, Tadakwa Emmanuel in Germany. We'll pray for her at the end of the broadcast this morning, but we'll also make sure that our Absolutely. office calls, you know, just to pray with them also directly. Okay. So, Global Baba, let's um, round off this edition of the program by going to spend the night 
in Pakistan of all places. Hello, Shalom. I'm Ernest Hanan Rafiq. I write to you, Global Baba, from Pakistan. The one who is dubbing, I'm the one who is dubbing, that is translating your messages, your teaching videos into Urdu and Hindi languages. I want to talk to you, dear sir, about an online meeting in which only you and um, me will be, and you will teach, and I will translate into Urdu and Hindi. I will record that teaching, and then I will edit it and put it on my Facebook page. I've dubbed so many messages of uh, yours, in, and in Pakistan and India, people are being blessed by your teachings. And now people of uh, Pakistan want to hear more. So this is, what the, this is how the idea came about, to record a teaching session with you, in which I'll be with you, and I'll translate all that you say. It could be on Zoom or any application. Thanks, and I hope what I'm doing, that you are watching it and happy about it. I'm so glad to hear and letting others to also hear in our languages. Enes Hanan Rafik, Abounding Great uh, Ministries of Pakistan. Well, wow. Enes, thank you again. Thank you for all you do for the kingdom, helping to get what we teach into those languages and helping the people in Pakistan to come to the knowledge of the truth, you know, through the things we teach. I will encourage you to keep it up, keep it going. Our office will respond to your email. God bless you. Amen. Global Baba, we need to just um, do some prayers, uh, all of those requests, and then come back and say bye-bye. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for this brother whose wife is having Parkinson's disease. In the name that is above all names, Amen. how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed of the devil. You oppression of the enemy. We command you broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll receive a miracle for that woman right now. We command every part of her body, her brain cells, her nerves, her tissues, her tendons, her heart, her mind, all of it totally, supernaturally, rejuvenated, revitalized, restored to soundness in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for others that are sick, sick bodies be healed. Amen. Satan, get your hands off Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, that your word rules. We pray for those whose requests are here seeking for interventions and miracles. We agree with them right now that miracles are released in their situations in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. Amen. Glory. That's the size of this edition of Ask the Counselor, indeed, of the program. We'll return live um, as soon as Global Baba wants us to return live. I, I guess that will be the second service. I mean, you know, but we'd like to thank you. Thank you, producer Dami Lola Adigun, standing in for, of course, producer Equere, IG Equere, Pastor IG Equere, and the production team. On your behalf, this is Michael Bush, your anchor, inviting Global Baba to let us go for now. The Intercontinental, somebody on Facebook Live right now said, I am Kauna Boniface. I greet and love you. My question, if I'm depressed and feel like dying, will I go to heaven if I commit suicide? What a question. What a question. Well, listen, brother. The reason why you are depressed is because you are lazy to hear the word of God. The reason why you are depressed is because you refuse to pay attention to the teaching of God's word. The reason why you are depressed is because you have not opened up yourself to the life that God has for you. The Bible tells us Jesus came to give you life and that you be abundant in that life. Now you don't have to, to commit suicide because the reason why you are depressed is because of certain expectations of yours that are not coming to pass. But Jesus said, the, the water that I give you, when you drink of it, you will never thirst again. So my advice, send us an email. We want to spend some time to counsel with you and pray for you. You don't have to commit suicide. You can live long, live well, serve the purpose of God and fulfill the purpose of God for your life. To send an email, all you need to do is send that email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com with your phone number. We would like to pray with you, spend some time and help you out. Now back to your question. If a Christian commits suicide, will he go to heaven? If he's born again, yes, he will go to heaven. But when he arrives heaven, he will discover that he cheated himself of so many things that God wanted to do with him and in him and through him. Suicide is not a license to hell. However, if you commit suicide, you just give in to selfishness. And selfishness is not Christ-like. 
Now, let's pray together. I mean, let me quickly wrap up this before I, we, we, we round up the broadcast by saying we thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve you the grace of God. Remember, in the second service, we have asked the council or live. You don't want to miss. It's, it begins at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. Let me also mention that every day in the evenings, we have the word of God coming on all our various platforms. On radio at 6, at 6 p.m. GMT plus one on Comfort FM and all the radio stations. And then every night, 9 p.m. GMT plus one on social media and on Kingdom Life Network. We love you guys. Always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Always an opportunity to, you know, fellowship with you in the light of God's word. I look forward to seeing all of you at 11 a.m. GMT plus one. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. Glory to God.